Dave Chappelle was attacked on stage whilst performing stand-up comedy. David Letterman joked, how many people would like to hit me with an attached picture of Santa Claus for some reason? Allergy season's here. I mean, stay natural unless you've got hay fever, in which case inject me into my eyeballs. As if this guy's supplements couldn't become any more of a joke. Dislikes incoming. I'm not the one selling it. I could have used a couple of scoops before the Esparza and Amunas fight, to be honest. I sat through the whole thing like a good lad. Introducing another bicep curl swinging dry scoop alpha influencer. Selling you a testosterone boosting pre-workout. Is that where we are now? A natural test boosting pre-workout formula. How many times are you going to reinvent the wheel, fellas? Well, probably enough times to buy new wheels. Cha-ching. To be fair, if I was selling a natural test booster in a pre-workout, I'd want to hide also. And so people have been asking me about Alex Eubank and the Photoshop stuff. I honestly don't know who he is. There'll only ever be one Eubank. Oh, go on. Go on. Tickle my tongue. Well, two. This should be a continuation. One straight line. And so he seems to have admitted it and said he shouldn't have done it. So there's that. Well, I shouldn't have even done it and probably would have done just as good. Literally, it was just because I like I was overthinking it. And um, I, I definitely shouldn't have done it because there was no need to. And I honestly just don't know anything about him. That's not meant to be disrespectful. There's just too many up and coming guys right now. But in any case, of course, photoshopping your pictures is not a good thing to do. Unless you have a head like me, in which case, is there anything you can do with that? A bit oblong, if anything. And so hopefully everyone's learned their lesson from this. For this week's TikTok, let should have their phones confiscated. Here's some idiots. Taking morbidly obese people and seeing if they can hip thrust their weight with Tammy's undefeated tagline. I get they're on TV, but your video is about as bad as your boy band flexing one. Role models, you guys wanted the attention. I think I'd prefer to watch the balloon method guy skits than yours. For 20 minutes. Why are you curling on the squat rack? There's 60s over here. That's what we call point mate. A Brazilian soccer player was reportedly dropped from his team for continuous farting and laughing. Give him a break. He probably just watched Liver King on the Logan Paul podcast. Is Liver King natty? I mean, he's on so much gear that the microphone just got a contact high. Yeah! And so the liver king has gone from insinuating that he's natural to now clearly overtly becoming one of the biggest fake natties of all time. There's a lot of uh, subprimals that are convinced that liver king is taking steroids. Is liver king natty? Do you think if I was on steroids, I would have these appendages down here, these legs? Skipping leg day doesn't make you natural, mate. Have legs. Do you see how little my fucking legs are? Just ask Dan Blagzarian. So this is what I say to people that make this accusation. That they are correct in giving people transparent information so that people are not misled. Um, if you don't believe this is possible. About what is possible. As you term it. Then I suggest that you take that self-limiting belief, you put that in a fucking box, and you bury that next to all your embarrassing shit. Even my Mickey Mouse underpants. I still use them sometimes. And don't open your fucking mouth about it. L let that live with you. Let you live with the fact that you are now straight lying and tricking people. He's lying to his audience. He's lying to his fans who don't seem to care. I'm tired of all the slander people have against you. Respectfully to those people who accept this from this person that they look up to. Behave yourselves or what I now term. Hi, I'm Liver King. Keep calm and fake natty. The cult of the fake natty, one of those. Loved your new pod with Logan. Keep it up, primal. Great listen on the pod. I love you, Liver King. I strive to be like you every day. 1.5 million followers on IG now. Two and a half million on TikTok. He's lying to people who trust and idolize you, the missing 10th tenet. Here's the thing. When I was in college, <laughs> I weighed 175 pounds and I was single digit body fat. I started working out about eight or nine years old. I had been, already been working out for, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. So now I'm 45 and I've gained less than one pound a year over 25 years. And in other news, I've lost 77 follicles of hair per year over the last 25 years. Not bold. That is such a dumb argument he has. You have a genetic natural limit. You can't just do bro science maths of how many pounds since you started training and dilute that over time to try and sound scientifically based. Not so much evidence-based, more evidently a disgrace. It is this simple. If you have super physiological amounts of muscle, you are taking external tests to achieve that muscle growth. You need to star in a movie. Well, he is a social media actor, so that works. But there is a sprinkling of hope. Our ancestors never took roids. Exactly, and they make a huge difference to his ability to train, muscle size, strength, and aesthetics. That is a physiologically correct statement that I've just made. Trenner Bowl is king. Even when leaving the Trenner clock train with a couple of kettlebells and more chains than the UK property market right now. And so listen, he can eat however he wants. He can promote his tenets and all that. He can farmers walk around a city, drag a sled with his mouth, not a gimmick. Empty a commuter carriage with his how to make commutes even more uncomfortable workout. Topless bloke doing that would suffice. He can do what he wants, but when he straight up lies about being natural and misleading people as to what is naturally possible, it is not okay. And these people should be called out because, again, in my opinion, they're a stain on the fitness industry. And to put that into context, even Chuck has now been honest. About a decade too late, Chuck, but at least he's being transparent now. You know, a lot of people don't uh, do what I'm about to do. If you've seen somebody leg like pressing like this, would you go up and help them or just let them do their thing? Not trying to spread hate or anything, but that's like 1,050 pounds and just look at his knees. Oh. I don't know exactly what I'd do, but 
One thing I definitely wouldn't do is secretly film the guy from across the gym while he's minding his own business. There is a distinction between people doing stupid stuff in the gym for likes and love hearts and self gain. For example, the guy I showed in my last video, who by the way, who showed us his leg day finisher in his latest post. Jacks are so overrated. I've got a couple of ties he could change. Put your back into it. Or for example, a couple of geniuses doing tandem deadlifts. The guy on the left using a weight plate to kind of be the right height as the other guy, eyeballing it, son. And I get it, they're strong, but tandem lifts are so ridiculously stupid. We see it all over social media with deadlifts or even bicep curls. We do see problems happen. I get the guy on the right is sponsored by Raw Gear and has to do zoo culture type stuff, but introducing tandem idiocy. So there is a distinction to be made here between influencers who are voluntarily uploading nonsense to their pages for likes and loves and just a general person in the gym who may be doing a standard exercise incorrectly and being secretly filmed and uploaded. I mean, for example, this guy, he's just doing tricep pull downs and yes, he should lighten the load. Yes, he needs to correct his exercise execution, but he's just making a mistake and a trainer could correct that. He's just minding his own business, unlike influencers who are fake game. For example, Bang Energy CEO. Hang with us, train with us, gain with us, bang with us. And don't forget, vibe with Vooz. Not weird, mate. Hey friends, just inviting you to vibe with Vooz. It's the all new hydration sensation. I'm in the middle of training right now. I feel great, but this is a drink you drink all day to stay hydrated. And no, you don't need to drink this hydration drink all day. Drink water, take in your nutrients from a carefully thought about nutritional program where you can intake your potassium, your sodium, your electrolytes, for example. This hydration drink being essential to people seems to be the new thing in a saturated market to make money. Prime Energy are the latest company to jump on this bandwagon. I did a detailed breakdown of their ingredients and the amounts and just the fact that it wasn't a great drink 500 dislikes how dare you i'm just telling the truth for most people who are just training even if training hard in the gym you don't need a hydration formula not even when a guy stays up until 1 a.m and records that showing those trt gains that's a real supplement you're taking isn't it mate and not when the label is as weak as that i mean that is embarrassing they must be so cheap to produce with a handful of underdosed electrolytes profit margin magic just focus on you and ignore the noise unless that noise is center fit this one's a monster not for the faint-hearted go at your own pace and give it a crack at center fit 10 rounds comments for appropriate generic instagram cringe get it big dog and look if you're a celebrity selling an app and showing a workout challenge from it and your exercise execution is very very poor in many cases it is worth reflection i feel not doing a supersetted barbell challenge breaking down the exercises individually and improving your competency with them and this app is meant to coach people to train well and this video is it's just pretty shoddy promoting it. From the knee bending with a bicep curl to apparently this is an overhead press. The squat range of motion is as limited as my hairline. And the list really goes on and on. And so listen, I'm not a form god with perfect exercise execution for every exercise, but I'm not selling you an app. I'm not selling anything. Chris Trensworth is, patent. This is how you do bicep curls, Chris. And I know that'll annoy his fans, but I've got a point. And by the way, I love to see the elderly resistance training. And to be fair, she is schooling him. This guy noticed it. Love yeah Thor, but this is some god awful form. Fatty Patty with the why never use Instagram typical comment. You're just jealous you're not even as close to relevant as him. And look, barbell challenges can be fine. It can be some type of extra work, but of course you have to be competent with movements before you're gonna superset them in a challenging, fatiguing way like this. And I understand there's no weight on the bar, but that point still applies. And so this video for me is not so much a promotional video for center fit as it is for the effectiveness of trend. Talking of overhead press, I found Jessica. Don't ask me how. I'm like black mold all over TikTok. Who's clearly rested her elbow on the keyboard there. I can hardly read anyway. That ain't helping Jessica. And she has a bit of humor to her profile. She does kind of comic flexing type stuff. And she has some pretty decent just lifting demonstrations, for example. And so looking at her profile got me thinking about multi-joint versus single joint exercises, obviously, with the boulder shoulder workout. So she shows a standard shoulder workout, you know, hitting different heads, the deltoid area. But what got me interested was the front raise there, the anterior deltoid exercise that is slightly debated. And this concept of, well, how many isolated movements should we put in? Especially if you're already using compound movements. Are these extra accessories, if you like, time efficient and effective? Are they worth it? And this is an open-ended discussion. There's no real right or wrong answer here. And for example, with the anterior deltoid muscle, you're already getting work into it from your bench pressing days, incline bench press, for example, decline push-ups, your compound shoulder exercises. And so do you need to have this additional isolated work on that muscle group? That is an interesting debate. And so a good exercise for you to do is to go through your programming, look at your compound work and your isolated work and think, 
well, do I need this extra isolated work? For some of you, you may want it in there for specific reasons, which is fine. For some of you, you may feel that actually it's not giving you further benefit and you may be able to shorten your sessions and trim the fat if you like. Now, of course, caveats to that would be bodybuilders who need every ounce of advantage and who can train full time. And there's a recent meta-analysis by Rose Rattel 2022, which looked at multi-joint versus single joint exercises for muscle growth. Now, this is from a subscription-based journal, but I will give you the takeaway with no toy included. And the first thing to notice is that there isn't much research into single joint versus multi-joint exercises for muscle growth. Now, this may surprise you. And in addition, the research we do have tends to focus on certain muscle groups, for example, the biceps, but we don't have research into the hamstrings, for example. And in addition, for the certain muscle groups that are studied, various points of the muscle are not looked at. So that's a further limitation. But here are the takeaways that the researchers give you. And essentially it's that multi-joint exercises are highly effective for hypertrophy. They're time efficient. And also importantly, it's not just the agonist prime mover in a multi-joint exercise that is getting work, but also those other muscle groups, for example, in a chest press, not just the pecs, but also the triceps. And so that's something to always keep in mind. Now, of course, for perhaps a more complete workout program, you add in isolated movements. That's absolutely fine. But the key takeaway is if you're adding in these further exercises in your session, just be mindful of why you are doing that. And if you have a good reason, absolutely great. An advantage of using single joint exercises is perhaps you can make sure you're hitting weaker muscle groups that may lag behind. Also, you can hit certain muscle groups from certain angles and make sure that you're stimulating those different parts of a muscle and that nothing is being left out if you like. So you have to weigh up the variables and make the best choices for your individual needs. Please let me know what you think. I'm James Linker. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.